What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. We are currently in Dave's van right now. We're gonna surprise Dave. I don't know where he went. Today we are on uh, part four, part five of the restaurant build. We got a lot of progress to show you guys. I'm excited to show you in a second here, but again, we gotta, we gotta surprise Dave. If he ever ends up coming back to the van. Oh, I see him guys, I see him. He's on the phone. Busy guy, busy guy. Well, now he's walking away. Okay. It's like the most boring intro to a video we've ever done. Oh, let's, let's get out of the van here. Hey, Casey. All right, all. Just hanging out in the van. See that. Yeah. Fun? I mean, I was trying to, but then Dave didn't show up. Casey, give us a rundown, buddy. This wall's looking beautiful. Casey's been working on getting the two by twos up and finished on this wall. Or something like that. Okay, something like that, something like that. You guys can see all of our windows that we built are nice and painted. I'm out here, show you guys what this looks like. All pretty much finished up. Obviously, we've still got our LSB in there just as our temporary until the glass shows up, but everything is looking freaking killer we can essentially call these done until the glass shows up and then all of this is going to get stucco patched in but we got to wait till we pull out these other windows and see what kind of damage we do and what needs to get patched there before we call the stucco guys out our next step is um we're going to be jumping on these windows they're essentially like bifold doors so we'll call these doors more than windows and we've got a heck of a start on these yesterday as you can see right here this is going to be the jam with all the two by four material so the jams will match these jams on the windows we did over here. And then because to make a bifold door, you need a track on the top and you, depending on the weight of the doors, you need a track on the bottom. Ours are gonna be heavy steel with glass in them. So we're doing a track on the top, track on the bottom. Now, one of the things you'll notice on the windows behind me is they have this transom window up top and that's the window that doesn't move. It's a 12 inch transom window. So we wanted to carry that sight line all the way across. So these doors over here are also gonna have a 12 inch transom on top, which is what you see right there. Now, instead of just taking this track and mounting it on the bottom of the transom, right. so, which would leave you with like four inches, four and a half inches of material there, and would really kind of jack up the sight line of seeing that two inch material go all the way across to the other side over there. We decided to inset the track. So we actually went ahead and cut a nice channel into this two by four steel material here and then we inset this barn door track and then just went ahead and drilled and tapped a couple of corner 20 screws in there so now we can just unscrew it and you'll be able to pull the trolleys out should they ever get damaged or you need to replace them or worn out or whatever it may be obviously this is sitting upside down right now this will get flipped over so that is the top now i'm gonna go through right now and finish welding everything up get it all ground down smooth and then um, and while I'm doing that Dave is working on making the actual bifold doors which are going to be two by two material similar to those windows and then over here we've got the countertops going in which is all nice beautiful white quartz looking good looking good so there's going to be quartz there quartz here and then quartz in that POS station over there so every once in a while a mystery shows up on the job site I just found this on my welder it says hi Dave I don't know if it's supposed to be a snake. It's full of some clear white liquid. <laughs> Doc, I mean. <laughs> Is this from the barber? I don't know where this came from, man. Like, it's that looks horrible. <laughs> we got a warning? <laughs> Government warning. What is that? The Surgeon General. Women should not drink. Women shouldn't drink if they're pregnant, is what it says. They're gonna tell me, like, alcohol comes in something like this? <laughs> like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> okay guys, we have found what the Kruggies are. Like, I don't like that this is on my welder right now. I don't know where this came from. I literally was grinding and then look over and this is now on my, like did somebody from outside set it here? Did Nick do it? I don't know anybody that's running around with a red Sharpie that writes like a five-year-old. That's, that's gross. So I was at the store guys and well, you know, they had a sale on some, some water rock throwers. It was like, Two bucks. This is Adolfo. Adolfo gets the real work done around here, Adolfo. <laughs> oh, Jesus!
guys, we are back here on day two of part 42 of whatever of the restaurant build. We've got our newest employee back here, Dedek. He's gonna do his first TIG weld here and we're gonna see how he does on these window frames. And hopefully he nails it. Then I don't have to do it anymore. Damn, son! Get the clean Dang, his son, you're hired! Get clean his He's hired, there. Dave! Yeah. Okay. That's, that's the first wall that take wall that I've put down in over a year, honestly. I haven't done any take walls. Yeah. <laughs> You're in, buddy. You're in. Meanwhile, over here we've got uh, pretty much the layout going. Dave's working on getting the actual bolts that are um, our attachment hardware we're gonna use to attach to the lower wheel as well as the upper track wheel assembly that's in here. So basically we're gonna have um, you know this third door laying right there. We're gonna be attached at that point. We're gonna have hinges down this side. We'll then be attached at this point. We'll have hinges down on this side. This third door right here is gonna free float. It'll all make more sense here in a second. We're actually gonna basically assemble it, stand it up, test it, make sure everything's gonna work. Obviously we won't have the bottom wheel and track on yet, but it'll give us a good test to see if it's gonna work. So we can replicate this and make our second set or if it's not gonna work at all, we don't know. A lot of the stuff we just kind of make up as we go and usually it ends up working out pretty well, such as the windows behind me here with this glass in it, which just turned out perfect, perfect. Look at this, look at how weighted this is. Like you just close it, it stays closed. You wanna open it, it's not too heavy, it's not sketchy, it's not scary, which is something that we had worried about when we were designing these. Like the pivot point, everything just worked out perfectly. I'm glad we made a model of this before we proceeded. These ones, a little hard to make a model of, so we're just going for it. Okay, so we've got our stud welded on here. That's gonna attach to our top trolley. Wrong way, dog, wrong way. Okay. Okay. Okay guys, so we've pretty much got everything done here in design-wise on how we're gonna hang these things, how the wheels are gonna go, how we've got our adjustability. Right now, we're going through and we're attaching these hinges. Obviously, we're just drilling and tapping into the steel. These are weld-on hinges, so we actually drill holes in them and turn them into bolt-on hinges because we feel like it's gonna be easier to be able to pull these things apart versus weld this big mass together. We have to try and put three doors in as one. Let's take a second to appreciate Dedek's sick new work for shirt though, look at that. Oh, look at that, buddy, look at that. Dedek, where can we get that shirt? Oh, you like this shirt? That is a nice shirt. Go ahead and over. Uh... Uh... Go ahead and head over to uh, workforwardapparel.com. Get yourself one. Nice, buddy. Nice. So we've got it stood up here in place. We've got two of these all nice and hinged together. We're gonna give this a shot before we hinge our third one on. We want to make sure everything so far is gonna work. Touch oh, it, hold on. So are we going? Touch it. Hey, man. Just bolt them, dog. Well, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to what? Come you up. Exactly what I'm doing. Okay, come up. I'm doing it. No. You come to me. No, hold on, hold on. You might come up and see. You want some chimes? No, you're, you're too tall right now. There we go. Um, I'm perfect. in. Are you in? Nah, Alright, boys. I'm all. Looking good. I'm gonna right come enough. real high with it, okay? Looking good, right? Looking good. You got it, boys. I'm, I'm steadying it up here, okay? You guys are doing great. Breathe. Don't forget to breathe, guys. Yeah, you have to thread it on the stud first and then kind of spin the thread in. It's weird. Oh, I got mine on. We on? Just lift. There we go. There we go. All right, all right, all right. Hey, I'm liking this already, boys. Right, right. I'm liking this already. No, it's just on the wheels, man. Let's go. Look at this. Oh, lost I think we should let it come down. Okay, your well, side can come down. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, we have all three panels on. Everything is looking great. Dedek, give us a little demonstration there, buddy. Door number one. Door number two or door number three? Why not all three? Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful, Dedek. Beautiful. There you go. Now, why should I buy this, Dedek? Why you should buy this? Because it gives you the best of all worlds. Not just both, all worlds, all right? You want, you know, a little bit of privacy, even though it's glass, don't worry about that. You can always stain it, tint it, do whatever you want. Get a little bit of airflow, you know, that's not enough for you. Want some more? You want to do a little something like that, or you just want to block out the whole world? I'm tired of that. Can we, can we adjust this and get it over with? <laughs> so right now the track on the bottom is currently not level. So once we like get all of our reveals set right and our height set right, once it goes to this side, that track's a lot lower. The floor is like a quarter inch out of level where she's sitting, so the wheel kind of comes off. But once she's in place over there, the, wait, over over there, the track's gonna be completely level or at least parallel perfectly to the top there, so that won't be an issue. But for our mock-up here, 
the wheel has like popped off the track a time or two. Oh, just kidding, just kidding, it's back. Just kidding, it's back. Okay guys, well it has been a couple of days since we have filmed at the restaurant. We've been slowly working away here, getting things checked off the list. And one of the things I'm most excited about is we finally have one of the bifold doors installed and we are pretty much gonna finish out the second one today as well. Let me show you guys how these things work. They turned out pretty freaking awesome. So from the inside here, we've got just a couple of like standard gate latches that go into the concrete there. And then uh, we'll talk about the concrete here in a second. But basically, you just undo both of those, lock them in place. This thing slides on the bottom track there, which is suspended right now. And then we've got the top track just to kind of keep everything in line, but we keep most of the weight on the bottom track. But all you gotta do is slide this thing over right here. It's a little easier with two hands, but she moves nice and good. And these are gonna open opposing ways. So that one will fold out that way, this one folds out this way, and you got, basically you just open up a whole wall on the restaurant. And then on the bottom here, um, once we pulled out the old windows that were here, we realized they had this sill plate basically buried in the concrete. So there's this weird step here. Um, and then obviously we like our windows and doors to stick out proud. That way when they come in here and they laugh in stucco, we basically have the windows sticking out past and it looks really cool. We're keeping the same reveal that we have over here on the windows, so they'll stick out just a little bit further than the stucco. But by doing that, they now stick out further than where the old windows were. So we're basically gonna have to pour concrete out to the edge there. So we'll end up forming it out to basically the edge of the jam right there. Now for the track, I basically use the trick that we use when we set structural steel when we're building a house or something. And that is we epoxy in some all thread or, or when you're doing a house, you normally have um, you know, your cages already in the rebar and in your footings, and then you have your templates with your all thread sticking up. So I just epoxied this all thread in, and if you can see on the bottom there, we've got a washer and a nut on the bottom. And basically what we can do is, we can now raise and lower the height here to get this track perfectly level. Because we noticed in some of our testing, you know, obviously if this track's not level, uh, the wheel on the bottom there could slip off and then this thing gets a little bit wonky. So by having that all thread in there and being able to crank up or down on those nuts, we're able to set this track perfectly level, and we're able to get everything installed um, before we come in and form this and pour the concrete, which will sit just right up underneath that. It makes it a lot easier than putting in concrete, hoping it's level, and honestly, it's probably not gonna be level because we'd have to match up to the old concrete that's inside there, otherwise you're gonna have this weird step in it. So now we don't care what the concrete does as long as it's below the um, top of the track there. And then I don't really know, you know exactly what I filmed. This was like days ago or a week ago that we last came in here to film, but we've got that whole wall painted, the, wind, or the, the mirrors are in, the mirror frames are in, we've got the mirrors behind all the booths that are in over here. Nick went ahead and got this soffit completely wrapped with the TNG. I mean, look at that. Look at that beautiful work right there. That corner looks killer. Nick, great work on your corner. Casey over here. I'm not sure, not sure what Casey's doing. Casey, are you Why sure what you're doing? No, I never know what I'm doing. Oh. Making some, it up as I go. Putting some TNG on the boots? Yep. Okay. Gotta make them look pretty. Casey came in and did a bunch of some pretty sweet trick work here on getting everything dialed in. Went ahead and, uh, the main office there. This whole wall got TNG, including the door. You'll see, obviously, all these pieces are cut out of the same piece. That way you don't see like the grain change or anything weird like that. Same with over here. You'll notice that the grain stays consistent on this piece, up to that piece, and over to that piece. Like the grain is consistent through all of this. It gives it that nice waterfall look versus just cutting random pieces and trying to splice them in. I'm gonna let you talk about that. Hold on, hold on. Let me turn the music down for a second. Nick was mad, I didn't point out his masterpiece down here as well. Nick, go ahead, buddy. Tell us about what we got going on down here. Tongue and groove again, T and G, as Lee likes to say. <laughs> anyway, and everything waterfalls. That was a weird corner to cut. And the very end was even more weird to cut if you go look at it. So you can see, instead of just like button everything up to the bottom of the bar like most places would do, it's got this super sweet angled kick to it. Nick had to uh, basically cut around to fit over the, the two by twos that were cut in there. So, looking good, buddy, looking good. Okay, so I've got the track welded up for the second door. Dave came back from wherever, you know, Dave goes. We don't, we don't ask questions on where Dave goes. I'm back. Glad you're back. Good to see you back, buddy. I'm back. It is good to be, good to be seen. Now check this out. This is something new on the job site. I've never been exposed to the uh, Milwaukee MX fuel line, which is like their, their big boy tool battery line. They've got a jackhammer. They've got a cutoff saw or a, a quick cut saw. Uh, or concrete saw, whatever you want to call it. 
um, and it runs these MX fuel batteries, which you can see this battery right here is massive. There's one battery here, and one battery down below. So this is their like alternative to generators. I know everybody hates on it. Everybody's like, ah, I want a generator. I want a generator. Screw that. That's electric and we hate electric. Everything has its place. Look at that battery right there. Look at that battery model though. You know, trust me, there's a time and place for a gas car generator, there's a time and place for something like this. We've got it on site right here. It's actually gonna be going to the other restaurant. They're gonna be running the uh, outdoor dining area that we built a long time ago. Um, the city's getting on everybody that built those for permits and you can't run electrical to them. So this is gonna be their solution to run um, their outdoor lighting without having to run electrical from the actual restaurant across the sidewalk into the street dining side of things. It's not ours, unfortunately especially considering you know, how expensive this thing is, but we've been running it. Um, we've been running the water cooler there on the welder for... How many days, eh? Four or five days we've been running the water cooler? So yeah, basically we've been running this thing for like three to four days straight running that. And you'll see here on the battery meter, We've got, we've depleted the top battery. We've got one bar left on the bottom battery here, but that's that's four days of you know, six to eight hours a day running that water cooler. Also fun fact for you guys, California is, I think they actually got through the ban on sales of gas power generators. Um, it hasn't like gone into effect yet. It might be next year, I don't know, whatever year it is. Fortunately, you're gonna see a lot more of these. And then when these batteries go out, you can use your gas power generator to charge these batteries. But something like this would be cool. You know, if you go through like power outages and you wanna run a couple little things in your house um, until the power comes back on, albeit they're pretty cost prohibitive at like $4,000 here for this setup with four batteries. We've got the fresh battery charger here to go with it. Well, so I figure we could put this under one of the benches at the at the streetery, you know? Right. And then and then just make it to where they could put the batteries in, you know? But here's what's going on. So we're, we're down to this last bar here. And then if I check this battery, then it's flashing, hey, I'm done skis, right? So I can pull this out. And then I can Look at check this connection one. though. Look at that. Yeah, like, it feels... They got a lot of wire, or a lot of uh, contacts right there for that connection. Dude, they like... There's a lot of negative reviews about this thing to where I was kind of hesitant about getting it. And I get it because it's a first generation thing, but one thing that ain't gonna change is this. Yeah, I mean, it, I, that's it a feels, nice battery connection. It feels awesome. So now, now we're loaded up on our, on our four there. And then my idea is back in the restaurant, the reason I got four batteries, that in the restaurant world, you know, they slip in the two batteries or turn that thing on as it's getting dark so that they turn on the lights at the streetery and then the same dude or lady is in charge of getting these two done. And then it takes about 90 minutes for per charge. Not bad. So I figured they're only gonna turn the lights on. I mean, they kind of close at like 11 or something. Okay, so we've got our holes drilled there. We're gonna get our quick set epoxy put down in here. You guys see these type of tubes? Basically these are a two part epoxy and the tube has um, like a little maze inside of it that mixes the epoxy as it comes down. Get it in the hole there. And it is no joke when we say quick set. And we're gonna set her in. And just like that within a couple minutes here, our epoxy is nice and hard, so I've already gone ahead and basically used our bolts to get this track completely level all the way across. I'm not gonna know until I get the doors in exactly what height that we wanna be at. So now we put the doors in. I'll show you guys kind of how this works. Pretty simple. We just thread this top bolt in, we'll get the bottom onto the track. All right, give me a little upskis. Coming. Too much upskis. All right, oh, 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 oh. down a little bit. Can you give me down a little bit? All right, right there, right there. Oh, uh, uh, uh. All right, I'm gonna stand her up as I thread her in. How about that? It's a good design on that hardware. What's that? It's a good design on that hardware. Not good though. You'll see here in a second. Like these. Okay, so we've got door number one, door number two. These are the two hard ones because these ones have to line up with the track roller down below as well as our super sweet carriage up top there. Now this whole carriage bolt assembly right there, maybe you guys can see with the little welded on nut which allows us to tighten it. That was compliments of this man right here. Yeah, baby. Who just got yelled at. Can we talk about it on camera? I know it hurts your self I'm, I'm a little sensitive about it still. It's a little fresh. You there know? there was a like woman a driving wind. by. And we're, we're gonna call her a, a one at best, looks wise. Sorry, I mean, guys. I think that's unfair, you know, even though she's, I, you know, I, I feel like she's lashing out. We she was need, rough, older lady. To, we don't need to disparage her. Yeah. Driving by, looked at Dave and said, can you put a shirt on please? And then drove off. Let's just say, and now, I, you I, know I'm sensitive about that. Right? Well, I, you know I hate to be that guy, but I think 
Dave might be the best looking man she gonna see shirtless in person. She might wanna just embrace, embrace this. <laughs> now, unfortunately, we don't have time today to like actually cut pieces of OSB that would fit in like the size of the window. So we got the, the ghetto lock going on here today. Now I'm gonna apologize for this video being like 42 different clips of like, I don't even know how many days we got going on here, but we're moving right along. I'm gonna show you guys the progress of the restaurant here. We've got our bifold doors are all finished, everything's painted, and then we got a big old boo-boo on the front of the building here. But we'll show you that in a second. However, right now, we uh, saw some thermostats yesterday. These are the ones that were here. We just re-put them in, and uh, well, nothing's turning on. So Dave talked to our HVAC guy, and he's like, eh, if you don't turn the breakers off before you disconnect those, sometimes you blow these little fuses that are on the HVAC system itself. So. We are climbing up on the roof here, you know, using like 14 points of contact because we are all about safety. This ladder is definitely not too steep and uh, definitely not, you know, full of fuses in one hand because I don't know what type of fuses this thing uses. Supposedly they're automotive, but you guys know there's like four types of automotive fuses. And I'm going to pretend like I know what I'm looking at here. <laughs> if I were a fuse, we ain't got no serviceable panel. You got to pull stuff off. This might not be happening, guys. This might not be happening. Panel B. Line one, fuse bad when lit. These are not the fuses we're looking for. Those are the main fuses. We're looking for the fuses that run the little 12 volt or 24 volt system for the thermostat. You want me to call my, my Ruski? No, dog, we got this figured out. Look, man, I did read the instructions, but they also put, look it, this panel is for, I don't know what that is. This panel's for the blower and this panel's for the controls. I would guess we're in the control panel is where we need to work. All right, guys, today's goal, don't get electrocuted. So let's see what's behind door number one here. Okay, okay. Looking like we're in a good spot here. I see a fuse. I see a little three amp right there. That's what we're gonna be swapping. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any three amps at the auto parts store, so five amp it is. All right, well, I mean, right now again, you know. What happened, buddy? Money. I mean, he's he read the hieroglyphics you know and, okay and now he's now he's in i'm gonna pull her out okay i turned the power too. she looks blown up dog hey man do so you think a, this is the problem stick a new three in there man. okay well i'm gonna stick a five in there because that's all we got <laughs> and we're gonna hope for the best even though it says three amp on here i mean what could go wrong just go get a three i couldn't find a three try I five got a what's what up makes that fuse blow up <laughs> Four amps. <laughs> <laughs> so now we got till six amps. <laughs> no, I mean like, like how come us taking the thermostats off makes those fuse blow? Let's well, see, Dave. I'm just an amateur uh, weekend HVAC guy. <laughs> Couldn't tell you that, man. Oh, Couldn't tell you. Good trade. I get why people like it. I like crawling around in the attics. That's my favorite part. <laughs> it's, the, it's the fiberglass insulation. I really crave that. You know. I mean, I hear you, man. So we've got the fuse replaced. We're just gonna try one unit for now, even though we don't know which breaker turns this unit on versus that unit over there. Um, so I guess we're just gonna turn them both on and see what happens. See if the thermostat comes on. Uh, hey, is uh, right over there? Yeah, this is Rhino. Oh, uh, hey, Rhino. Uh, my name is Dave. Uh, are you ready? I'm ready, dog. Hit it. All right. I'm going to do one three, okay? Like, I don't know. Or do you think I should do 9-11? You tell me. <laughs> no, let's not do 9-11. I think bad stuff's going to happen if we do 9-11 first. All right. Let's switch one three. one three. All right. You got your suit on? I got my suit on. I'm ready. All right. All right. That is the right one. I heard it. All right. Let me check the thermostat. All right. We got a thermostat. So set the date. Oh, we got a thermostat. <laughs> yeah. Rhino's HVAC services, David. Going to uh, change the other one. All right, guys. Well, it seems like we were successful. All right, guys. I've switched out the other fuse. So let's flip breakers 911 here and hope for the best. Let's see if it worked. Oh, 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 look at that. We got two working thermostats now. Boys, we don't got to sweat no more. What do you want it at? 40 degrees? 40. 40 degrees. Let's go. I'll see how cold we can get it. Cool. Uh, 50's as low as she goes, boys. Is that okay or you wanna go work somewhere else today? Somewhere else? Yeah. <laughs> okay, y'all, let me get you guys caught up on what's going on inside the restaurant here. Um, we've got all the drywall in. Obviously, we need to mud and tape this whole wall right here, but we also have our bifold doors finished over here. We've got the concrete patched in. Everything is painted, the glass is in. And then uh, Dave just put in the stained glass that's gonna go there, and then there's a matching stained glass window that goes right there. But let me show you guys the issue. Now, obviously, 
with all of these windows that we added to the front of the building here, um, we needed to patch the stucco in around it. And I called my guy Mike. Mike's the guy that did the guest house. And by the time I had called Mike, uh, he was busy on a job, didn't call me back, and Dave had already called some guy that he knew. And that guy just happened to be down the street, so he showed up right away and got scheduled up. So I, I wish, I wish we had gotten Mike out here, because let me show you the workmanship here. And unfortunately, the sun is in the wrong spot right now. But once the sun crests over, I think later in the day here, we're gonna get the sun on the front of the building here. But this stucco job is absolutely horrendous. And the problem with restaurants is, it's go, 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 go. There ain't time like to redo this. They don't care, the owners don't care. Paint it and call it good and let's move on. Which for guys like me, that is like, ugh, like I hate that. I absolutely hate that. Okay, so it probably doesn't look that bad to you guys. Down here, the stucco patch ain't bad. Kind of matches the finish of what's up there. And again, I'm gonna film this in like, I should probably wait. You know what, we're gonna come back when the sun kind of gets to this side of the building so you guys can see it. Cause right now it's really hard to see. It actually looks, it don't really look okay, but it looks better than it does. Now while we wait for the sun to shift so I can show you guys in front of the building, we're gonna pull out this other piece of clear glass here. Dave's cut all the steel and then they used to attach it. And we're gonna catch it. Just push it, see what happens. There you go. There we go. Give me a little more push. All right, got her. Hey Dave! Righto! Okay guys, the lighting is a little bit better right now and we're also putting in this piece of stained glass and uh, well, I just so happen to be up top here. So let me show you guys. You can kind of see the stucco work that was done here is not that great. So granted, you didn't really have the bar set too high that you had to match to. But I'll be damned if you did a horrible job <laughs> not even matching that. I mean, look at this transition. This transition is super rough from the new to the old. The old is super rough. Now there's a couple weird plane changes you'll see here. They put this little flashing above these doors right here, but then they made this little notch here, which kind of got a little weird. I wasn't here when they did it. They did it on a Saturday. Dave was here with them. They didn't have that little overhang there, so they like splooged it up, but then Dave's like, no, man, that looks horrible. Like make a little overhang. Again, I, I wish the sun was on this building right now because you guys got to see how bad this is. It's, it's going to be hard to show, especially on a GoPro, but this stucco work looks freaking horrendous. Now, thankfully, we're up against stuff like this. So we're like, we kind of, kind of matches. Like whoever stuccoed this building probably is the same guys that did that. But we're gonna get a grinding wheel on a grinder uh, and we're gonna try and like feather that edge up top right there so it's not such a hard transition. Again, all of this is getting painted white. So it's gonna look better, obviously, than it does now once we doctor it up a little bit. But again, we're just kind of out of time. Like this restaurant needs to open. And a lot of you guys probably watched a couple videos ago where I talked about not cheaping out. This was not cheaping out either. Um, you're probably gonna say that. that's what you get for going with a cheaper bid. But no, these guys are actually fairly pricey to where you would think for the price they charge, you were gonna get like top quality work. And well, unfortunately we did not. We'll go with my stucco guy next time. Not these guys. This was a crew of five, by the way. There's a crew of five. It's not like it got away from one guy because they were using rapid set. Um, this was five guys that were working on this. And it's just, it's, it's not impressive at all. It's one of those things, especially being the editor of YouTube and all that, like I could have totally never showed this and been like, all right, restaurant's done, everything looks great. That would have been painted. Most people wouldn't have noticed, but I'm all about being real and being real with you guys. And sometimes stuff like this happens. And I don't want somebody to drive by and be like, oh, that's the restaurant Dave and Rhino built. Holy crap, that front looks horrible. <laughs> but we'll get it, we'll get it doctored up, guys. Don't worry. But take a look at our windows. Like we got our bifold doors all nice and painted. Everything looking good. We've got the concrete poured below where we had the track kind of suspended. Like everything's coming together pretty good. Obviously these aren't closed. That's why they're kind of at a weird angle there, but everything is open, not locked. And now we got the stained glass in. And then the plan is those same colors or one of those colors is supposed to be put on as like a vinyl film on these windows to make them kind of mimic the stained glass look up there. Because unfortunately you can't get stained glass in this big of pieces, at least from the glass suppliers we talked to. Now the last new little update we've got here is, uh, well, we got a, a booth back. Dave, talk about this illustrious, what is this endangered polar bear that they use for this? <laughs> uh, albino rhino. Albino rhino, okay. So we've got uh, the seats upholstered here. Look at this. Beautiful work, beautiful work. So this is the sample they brought. It looks good. Man. It does look good. They took all the other booths, um, all the frames that Nick made, and they're gonna be upholstering all those. So we should be getting those back any day here. 
Now, I hate to say, this is probably the last video we're gonna do before we show you guys the final product because, well, pretty much everything's done. We got the mirrors on, we got the soffit done, we got the bar back done, we got the bar front done, we've got the windows other than, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on, I forgot. We are working on the louver windows, which are gonna go there, they're almost done. The most annoying hard part is pretty much done here. And then we get to figure out the mechanism to make these all louvered. But you guys are gonna have to wait for the next video. Well, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, and get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. Hey dog, hey dog, hey dog. Work for it all the good god time. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah.